Despite the disruption caused by the COVID-19 on the Nigerian economic landscape, it is safe to conclude that the Nigerian banking sector remains resilient in the face of the COVID-19 and several regulatory headwinds. Nevertheless, banks' earnings and asset quality have taken a bit in while under pressure for, from competition as the pandemic has also provided learning points for players in the sector to reshape, re-imagine their product services offerings for long-term growth and sustainability. Given the steep improvement in the contribution of the financial sector to the country's third quarter gross domestic product, the banking sector still faces continuous period of uncertainty as the resilience of the sector is said to depend on some players' response to new developments. Well, to give more insight into this matter and much more concerning the growth of the banking sector in Nigeria and the resilience we've recorded so far, I have joining me live in our Lagos studio, senior economist at SPM Professionals, Paul Alaji. Good to have you on the show today, Paul. Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. Now, looking at the overall resilience we've seen from the banking sector, the hit from the COVID-19, we saw the banking sector had one of the most robust shock absorbers. We cannot compare any other sector to how well it performed. By the end of the day, looking at also the highlights we had from the last monetary policy committee meeting from the Central Bank of Nigeria, also making reference to this commendable feat we've had, the governor still says that we have to see banks maintain very tight uh, and prudential uh, regime in terms of the dispensation and in the quest for having more access to credit. Now we have the Omicron coming to bear do you think we'll see a bigger shake-up? Let's look at best and worst-case scenario. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I, I believe that the banking sector will even perform better, mm. even with this new strain of COVID-19 that has just been discovered. I think the first one was announced recently in Nigeria. Um, I believe so because during the pandemic, during the great lockdown, uh, people still spent money. Even though people were at home, hmm. uh, there were still a number of activities that went on, even though major activities were under lock and key in order to protect lives uh, by the government of different countries. And Nigeria was not exempted. The good news here is that when you look at non-performing loan, one of the major parameters for how healthy banks remain, for Nigeria, it was 6.4 in 2020. The same year when it was measured, you know, at the recent report when it was measured for this year, mm. Nigeria went up to about 5.7, even mm. though the, the target is about 5%. But we have seen significant improvement. That is not true of quite a number of uh, banks around the world today. It also means that Nigerian banks might consciously or unconsciously be prepared for COVID. Why? Because before COVID, a lot of people were already transacting uh, via their apps. Uh, mm. Central Bank has even brought e Naira, you know, mobile app, which makes more and more people to even have access to online banking. And this will put more confidence, you know, in the mind of people that whether the bank open their shops or not, their offices or not, or their branches or mm. not, banking activity uh, could go on. I could transfer money to people without necessarily seeing the person. And it's the same for receiving phone. You know, unlike when we have to wait till 4 p.m. or wait till the next morning, all of those things so are have your transactions again. Done. So commercial bank, for instance, have, are now well positioned. The good news is we also have agency banking or agent banking, where people in the rural community are also rich, those that don't have banking presence. So the bank frontier continue to expand, even with COVID, with mm. or without COVID. And when you look at National Bureau of Statistics report, one of the sectors that remains strong, that refused to go negative, remain banking sector. Before COVID, that was not the case. Mm. But after COVID, or during COVID, and even till now, even though you, are, you might see sometimes where the growth might not be as high as the previous one, but the banking sector has maintained a good posture. And I think that's the resilience the central bank governor was talking about. When you look at the liquidity ratio, capital liquidity ratio, almost all the, or most of the important ratios that the bank should have, the bank seems, Nigerian bank seems to be improving. And I'm referring to commercial bank in Nigeria particularly. It also shows how healthy the uh, banking system is in Nigeria. And you might have one or two bank have issues, but when you look at it on the average, I can say that we have actually improved and we are better off than where we were 
several decades ago. Mm -hmm. And you know, banking sector have seen quite a number of revolution, you mm -hmm. know, from 2006, uh, where uh, you have major, a lot of major an acquisition, you know, to after that time, where quite a number of revelation came up about banking, um, governance issues mm. as led by uh, the former CBN governor, the, the former Amy mm. of Kano, mm. you know, and the current dispensation. So there seems to be that consistency in bringing out the best in the banking sector. Why? To protect the funds mm. of Nigerians first. And of course, those foreigners that may have their funds within our banking system. Mm. And I like the fact that you made mention of the non-performing loan rates that we've seen so far. This is quite commendable, irrespective of the shocks we've seen from the COVID-19. Hence, it means that businesses or entities receiving loans are playing by the rules, irrespective of whatever uh, headwinds we have here and there trying to shake up the economy. And then also looking at the liquidity ratio now, we have the push from 60 to 65%, and there's also the conversation around 70%. Do you think the banks are still healthy enough to still continue this uh, resilience trend of increase in the volume we have going to the real sector of the economy because forcing an economy to grow irrespective of the challenges it's quite difficult the volume or the aggressiveness of investment has to be much more to spur any sort of growth now well, in terms of how healthy they are your thoughts on that well i think the banking sector is very healthy i also think that we need to allow uh, the forces of demand and supply to adjudicate price um, instead of having undue influence on the banks. And I also think that the central bank has been doing some of the things possible to make sure that the health of the banking sector remain intact. So um, when you talk about the liquidity ratio, I don't think the bank are doing badly right now. Generally, the economy had issues. Nigeria economy has a lot of issues. When you look at our foreign direct investment, even those that bring money for um, portfolio investment, you know, an economy where investment is not sufficient, it will tell on the banking sector, no matter the policy, mm. because monies will not just sit in a bank doing nothing. What is the essence of money you have? You have inflation, you have quite a number of things, and business people are investors. They want returns for their money. So, banking sector right now have been able to maneuver and to manage things. I also think that they understand this economy thus far. That is why we are seeing the kind of strength they are seeing. But on another note, I think that authorities in this, I mean, by this I mean the central bank, we also need to give more breathing space to the Nigerian bank. We've had accommodating rates from mm. monetary uh, policy authority over the time. We have also seen central bank have taken some very strong position against erring banks and mm. so on and so forth. But with the new regime of FX going to the bank, it's good news for banks because, of course, they're going to make more money. We have also seen people that register with BVN has increased. It used to be 40 million. We have more numbers now. So uh, there are more businesses, more opportunities. What I just want Nigerian banks to do because of the uh, new uh, licenses that were issued mm. to two of the four major telecom mm. companies we have in Nigeria is for them to smell the coffee. Because in the coming period, banking will not be the way it used, it used to, to be. be. As we have banking now, it's not just going to be, I deposit in my account, that was old bank, I deposit my account, I'm waiting for my salary picket. Mm. Right now it becomes, oh, I want to buy a recharge card. It was not the case before. But right now that we are now having telco play some roles, complete, not exactly everything the banks are doing is one what integral they role doing. but in they are playing today. that role it means that commercial bank in nigeria should either think of major which is not something that is popular right now mm. but <laughs> when, when when microsoft started what was the business of microsoft what was the business of most of it today microsoft has gone beyond computing now it, it, it has phones so we will be seeing some level of major and banks that are I know Nigerian banks, once they see that this is the trend, they are very quick to innovate, even faster than most banks in, in Africa. So mm. they've maintained that record. With this new trend, I also believe that some of their best will be thinking of how will this affect us? Because the truth is that some of the monies that will be declared to their shareholders would have been eroded to, to telcos. Mm. Because those people have data of not just people within their sector, across board. And they can 
also be a big spender when it comes to spending the money for uh, more customers to come to them. Well, the license is going to revolutionize, and I'm also happy that Central Bank took that step so that we'll stop having lazy financial institutions who just believe that when people give money, we can put in T-bills or bonds, and we're going mm -hmm. to make uh, some revenue at the end of the day. Yes, all of those, you know, is in the debt market. The, the, mm. the, 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 the income is relatively fixed. But with a uh, with, 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 uh, banking sector, quote and unquote, having a competition, I mean, among some of the product that they offer, and that is going to telcos, I also believe it will breed healthy competition. And eventually, don't be surprised, when you see one or two bank uh, mm -hmm. fronting for, one, uh, one organization fronting for them with NCC. Why? Because these people are business-minded people, mm -hmm. and they also want the best. And the good news at the end of the day is that it's going to help Nigeria economy. There will be more investment attracted mm -hmm. to Nigeria economy, more jobs will be created. And at the end mm -hmm. of the day, I think Nigerians generally will be the uh, biggest achiever uh, with all of this competition coming up. Mm. And also now, let's look at some of the shake-up we've also had. As part of the highlights that made the year 2021, we saw the CBN governor make their hash stance in terms of operations of broad change operators, new issuance, new issuance coming to bear and uh, allocations going to that. Now it goes directly to the banks. Some have called for bigger allocations going to the banks. You look at sectors like uh, the aviation sector. These are sectors that demand heavy forex. But we still have these challenges of having enough forex to be able to keep these businesses afloat. These are key drivers of the economy. We've also had the banks also. This is an all-time high we are recording in terms of credit accessibility. Now, for businesses and sectors that continuously have hits from the COVID-19, now, we don't necessarily know how much of a hit we would have from this Omicron. But if it's as bad, let's really, I want us to explore a best and worst case scenario now. If it's as bad and we have a lockdown, what do you think uh, the likelihood will still be able to sustain some of these rates that we've had? And then some are also saying, well, we have to see slimmer rates come into bear. We have to look at what other central banks are looking at, zero interest rates, just to prop up the economy. And in the area of best case scenario, the Omicron, fizzles out to the capacity of the Delta variant and not necessarily hit as much. Let's look at this. Okay, so scenarios. far you spoke about the bridge churn. Uh, I think Central Bank made the best decision to stop the activity of uh, BDCs in Nigeria. Uh, it's not a popular opinion, but mm. it's one of the best things to be done. The way we were going at the time, um, registration of new BDC licenses at multiplied over and over again with central bank. So that became a concern. Of course, some persons are making profits from it, but the nation was bleeding at the time. Mm. After the decision was made, in recent time, we saw the impact of central bank decision in the market because nobody knows what the rates are. Mm. Then those uh, that were benefiting speculators, speculators of, 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 or, or against the Naira, they now started changing their minds. And we hope that in the coming period, we see much improvement, even though the rates have started going up again because it's end of the year, most people will travel and they may not have all the allocations from the commercial bank. That's on one hand. On the second hand, I also believe that there should be more allocation uh, going to the commercial bank before I talk about the impact of the new variant of COVID-19 uh, in, in Nigeria. So that's on the second hand. The banks in Nigeria needs to have more, but unfortunately, the central bank cannot give more than what it's doing now. And I will tell you why. This economy is not attracting enough forex. Mm. And I've seen some persons saying that the best thing for government to do is to devalue the exchange rate, <laughs> to devalue Naira, the Naira, so that we can have. And, and I have told them time and again, this is not, you cannot use a drug for headache. Because you think when you just take the drug, you sleep at night, you wake up in the morning, you are fine. This is cancer. Mm -hmm. The real issue here is that Nigeria is not a productive economy. So we want to use monetary to solution to solve trade problem. Mm. We are not exporting enough. And you could see the report that Central Bank published. Not so much mentioned about the report. We continue to manage trade deficits over and over and over again. And what do you expect when we are buying virtually everything outside Nigeria mm. and all we have to give is crude oil, taking larger proportion? So what
what authorities should do is to uh, ensure that we have private refinery or um, give out some of the public refineries, mm -hmm. the four of them, for private sector to manage so that we can conserve. At that time, Central Bank will have more to intervene in the markets, either through commercial banks or whatever organization they want to put in place. That will help. So we just have to make do with what we have. Uh, however, for the important sectors such as aviation sector, manufacturing sector, I think the central bank and the commercial bank need to prioritize those sectors. Because without them, we cannot. Before now, we have started seeing scarcity of uh, flights. Mm. You know, we had that just after the lockdowns. Scarcity of flights, Abuja to Lagos went for economy, went as high as 70,000. Mm. And uh, 70,000, and you could see our inflation numbers that were released at that time. We have started seeing some level of ease, but again, because these engines need to be serviced, and they are not done in Nigeria. Efficient business it's expensive. Is, is an international business, and it's not going to be in Naira. So mm. as much as we are seeing the planes in Nigeria, but they are global business that you have to use USD, I mean, to finance. That on the other side, talking about the best case scenario and the worst case scenario, of the new variant of, of COVID that just, Omicron that just been uh, discovered in Nigeria. The worst that could happen is for government to bring back the lockdowns in phases and eventually say sit at home. That's the worst we are, which we are not open for. That will take us back in terms of recovery. It will Potter. take us back. The economy may go back into recession mm. because that will mean that there will be seizure of the demand side and that if there's nobody coming to buy, what are you doing in the market? You have to stay indoor. We have to now revert back to essential services and you could see what that took us to minus six percent. So we don't even mm. want to think about it. And that was why I was very happy when government said during the second phase that it will not lock down this economy because some of us were there to say enforce non-pharmaceutical procedure mm. enforce it that's the right thing to do countries that enforce non-pharmaceutical procedure did not go into a recession mm. all countries that followed the west in saying sit at home block their people the west had the money even with their money they still went into recessions mm. and some of them are still struggling to come out we should not look at because we have a four point uh, something zero three uh, gdp growth rate. it's not accurate why? Because <laughs> the base year was negative. Mm. So it will not be a good comparison. We have 5.01% uh, GDP growth rate as against minus 6. Mm. So do you really have growth? So mm. you need to be compared. Before we can know whether we are growing or not, we have to wait till second quarter 2022. And compare the growth rate at that time with the growth rate we claim we have now. Mm. So if it is positive, then we know that we have started growing significantly. Mm. So whatever we have now, we understand. Because the times are not normal. The best case scenario, we don't have so much impact. You are going to see people still continue their operations. The more people put savings in bank, it will translate to investment. Because private sector, we have more money to collect with the bank. Mm. Central bank may want to sit on the fence for a longer time, which I am proposing, you know, for MPC to keep NPR at 11.5%, so that we can see through the impact Mm. of the policies that central I mean, that the monetary policy committee have made before we rush into let us review rates because when you review rate now you are not sure of the environment is inflation is still very close to 16 percent and 15 point uh, mm. 99 percent so the banking sector has had this gain but it is still very volatile mm. not because the banking sector is not doing well but the economy itself, itself. Is very very volatile. My hope is that Nigeria we do more in terms of vaccination. Uh, right now we have about and four, testing uh, capacity. Uh, yes, uh, we have less than ten million people mm. out of two hundred and ten million people. Be charitable and say we have uh, two, I mean, ten million people. The population that could be vaccinated is about hundred and ten or a hundred million. That is ten percent. Even though in the real sense we're about six percent. And we expect miracle to happen. So government, we need to do, mm -hmm. we need to change strategy to help the entire economy. There is no point not having, we have a lot of people that are trained in that regard because we have had max vaccination for other mm -hmm. reasons. We can deploy them during working hours. And on Sundays, they go to churches. Uh, weekends, I mean, on Fridays, they go to different mosques to see those that will be willing to take. We know for now, you cannot enforce, you cannot say people must take vaccines, but there are some that are not sure, there are some that may want to take for us, for us to have that herd immunity, because if you don't, whether COVID is real or fake, we are seeing that people are dying. Mm. 
Mm. And it's a concern to us. We are seeing that economy is becoming sluggish in terms of growth. We are seeing that income is disappearing. IMF World Bank reported more people are becoming poor. Government is going on with the policy irrespective. Government has proposed in, uh, removal of subsidy, mm. which will have tremendous negative impact on the economy. There's no way you want to explain it. 5,000 naira uh, to be given to 40 million people. One, A drop in because, the It doesn't even make economic sense because you want to stop 1.8 trillion naira to now bring 2.4 trillion naira. There is no sense. Two, mm. where will you find those people? Where will you find them? They are not with BVM, most <laughs> of the poor people. Uh, when you look at BVM register, it's less than 60 million people. You want to give 40 million, will you manufacture? And we say we want to do pure transfer. Third, the real problem will not be solved. What's the real problem? Manufacturing, mean, refining oil locally. Mm. So we have to get to a point before we say force of demand and supply, before we leave Nigeria free to exchange rate instability. We need to put those ref I mean, the refineries in place and the output must be equal to or greater than our consumption. That mm. is when the economy says, allow the forces of demand and supply. If not, it means we are pulling cost away from government and we are putting it on poor Nigerians. Paul, oh, let's wrap up our conversation now with the practice of corporate governance. Now, in terms of looking at the longer term growth and stability of the Nigerian banks we have today, be it from tier one, tier two banks and all of those commercial microfinance, Within the spectrum of financial services, let's look at the concept of corporate governance. Now, one of the well-known banks this year had certain sharp practices, which the CBN also had to immediately wield the big hammer over. Now, how important would you say this concept is to ensure that we have longer-term growth and sustainability? We cannot always continue to deal with the electric eel fish where we can't hold on and sanction certain elements. There is no future for any organization at all not just the banking sector, without appropriate corporate governance. Check the organizations that have appropriate corporate governance. The future is defined, the future is known. So you should not be surprised before we pass uh, PIA, what came first was the governance around PIA. So if you, there is no governance, you, you don't have a future. One of the major banks in Nigeria that had the issue, because the, the, there, is, the, there is, I don't want to call it secrecy of some sort, because such issue, one, everyone was surprised that such activity went on within one of the Unchecked. largest mm. banks in Nigeria. But leave the major banks, go to microfinance bank, because this is financial sector. That is even worse, where microfinance bank starts small scheme by the side without the understanding of central bank and collect monies from people and promise to pay triple or times four. Of, mm. That is why most of the banks are dying. It is because of corporate governance issues. Because they are not there. In cases where people copy other document, other mm. financial institution documents and submit to central bank. So it is not enough to say we have a central bank that cannot monitor the activities of financial institutions. So the activity of financial institution, as it has to do with corporate governance, must uh, be vetted, must be inspected, and there must be proper monitoring. And that is one of the things uh, International Monetary Fund IMF uh, staff report recommended to Central Bank of Nigeria. Because without which, we have seen for one of the banks, we don't know which bank is actually going that path mm. already, even, even if you have it. And if you remember, during the financial crisis we had, around, was it 2007, thereabout, mm. mm. what was the reason? Corporate governance was at the center of uh, the fall of the stock market. Mark you, most of the issues were going on in the financial sector. But what crashed? The markets. The markets. That is how powerful banks are. And if you don't get it right, I I'm sorry. It's mm. a matter of time. So what should central bank do? Because this is the regulator. He has the big whip to bring sanity into the sector. Is to improve our monitoring. So that before it gets this bad, we would have known. Mm. Somebody should check books. I know there are reports. Commercial banks, microfinance bank should send to a particular department or, yes, a department in central bank. How often are those documents vetted? How often? Is it just a ritual that when you submit the documents, not one or two, you know, submit them, and we just check and we, we believe you are fine? Mm. Are, we match, are we matching what the bank claim they have with what they truly have so that investors and depositors will not keep losing funds and will now be looking for way out? Remember, that was it last year or two years ago that Central Bank had to intervene 
uh, for one of the bank that was almost sinking. Mm. But thanks to Central Bank and the approach of uh, safety net that was brought on board, I hope we'll not have more of, more of those. But by and large, Central Bank has tried, and I think Nigeria banks, I will also say, I will give them thumbs up, particularly mm. for the year 2020 and 2021. Well, we'll continue to keep our fingers crossed. We have barely 30, <laughs> about 29, 30 more days before we have the year 2022 come to uh, bear, and then we're also going to start fresh assessments, and then we'd like to see just an improved resilience as well, and uh, better corporate governance practice and as a whole the banking sector healthy enough to be able to feel the rest of the economy because that remains one of the biggest engines to support growth thank you once again for your time on the uh, show this afternoon paul Elijah. it's been a pleasure speaking thank with you thank you so very much for having me